Um, Mr. Hayden, as you know, we're here to record our conversation with you with the intention of publishing it on a part of our uh, Macomb School District's oral history uh, project in collaboration with the Urban School in San Francisco. Do I have Miranda rights? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tom Hayden. I agree to the student's interrogation. <laughs> conversation. Conversation. Yes. We want you to be conversing. With, forget about this. Forget about us and simply talk to these kids. Forgotten. I was um, a journalist, still am, writer. I, I like to write stories. And it's turned out stories of social movements. Um, and so I was covering the SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. and. Um, they wanted me to, to go to um, in Mississippi um, because there was a march at uh, Berglund High School, I believe it was. But this, this detail is important because it will be so unreal to people watching this. We, Paul and I flew behind Bob Moses, who was the, the director of the project in Mississippi and is still a friend of mine. His kids are friends of mine. And he was sitting up in the middle and we were sitting in the back, but we were sitting apart. We did not go to the airport together. We did not get on the plane together. And when we got off the plane, he got in his car. I don't know if he was picked up. And we rented a car. And so we traveled separate but equal, so to speak, through the night to Jackson. Um, and, and then Paul and I took a, ca a, ca a car rented a car and we went to Macomb and stayed in a motel. Uh, and we were told by uh, Charles McDew and Bob and the others that we should um, drive the car to a gas station in the, in the black section of town. And the, the, the gas station would be dark and we should uh, stay in the car, not get out of the car. And the, another car would pull up, which it did. And, Another car pulled up and they told us to get out of our car and into their car and lie down. And so we switched cars and then shortly after we were at some driveway and, and uh, into a backyard, into a back door and then we went down into a basement where all the, uh, all the windows were covered with blankets. This is my introduction to a meeting <laughs> this was a meeting to plan out what was to happen the next day. And there were like two points to the plan. One was Paul and I were going to go into the white community and we were going to interview the police chief whose name was uh, Chief Guy, Chief Charles Guy, and the more liberal white editor of the newspaper whose name was Oliver Emmerich, uh, and I can't remember who else. And then we were going to go cover because I was writing for the uh, magazine, The uh, Progressive, we were going to cover the student <coughs> march uh, th uh, that would come in, in the middle of the day or something like that. So at, at that point, uh, we, would, we would reconnect, I suppose. So Paul and I went back to the uh, motel, slept, got up, and made our way into town, totally innocent, naive, went to see Chief Guy, and, and we were interviewing him, uh, uh, more or less. There was nothing, he, we, we didn't want him to know who we were with, who we'd come down with, but we were interviewing him straight up. And, and he was uh, cold and calm and listened to our questions and gave the usual statements about uh, all this trouble was stirred up by outsiders, meaning people like ourselves. Here we were. Guilty, and and then he reached in his desk, uh, and he completely blew our cover. He pulled out. He had photographs, excellent photographs, of Bob Moses, Bob Zellner, all the outsiders who were in Macomb, doing civil rights, voter registration, freedom school work, and I, I just had the feeling that he knew everything that we were doing, and he had our picture in the drawer, <laughs> and he was waiting for us to confess, and if we didn't, we were guilty. But he just gave you that kind of ominous, and, and he also, in an in a, in a understated way, uh, 
threatened us, saying, you, 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 you know, there's no, no way you can be safe around here. Then we went over to Oliver Emmerich. I remember less of that, but if he was liberal, God help us, because he also wanted us to get out of town uh, and said that we were crazy and that it was, the whole thing was stirred up by outsiders. And, and then we drove to the march, and we got to the march. Um, I think there's a railroad track, so I, I don't know if it's still there, but the railroad track splits the town racially, and the, the march is coming up one side of the tracks to cross the tracks into the, the no-go zone, the white area. And, and, and we're watching, and the police are surrounding, and there's some cameras there. And, but we're still in our little bubble of privacy. We're just watching, like we're not really in Macomb, Mississippi. We're in a car. We're in a rented car. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, the doors ripped open, and these guys, uh, I don't remember exactly who went first, I think. It, but they really ripped us out of the car. Um, several gentlemen and and um, you know I, I'm down on the pavement Paul's down on the pavement and they're you know kicking us kicking us in the head slugging us stomping on us yelling screaming I don't remember much of it and it's funny when you're being violated like that you'd have no no sense of time it could have been five seconds or 15 minutes I have no no idea and then it was over and the police were arresting us but here's the thing this, this white photographer, I wish I knew his name, I think it, it's accessible. He took pictures of this beating, threw the roll in his back pocket, and told us under his breath, get the hell out of town because they're going to come for you tonight. Whatever you do, don't stay at that motel. He did it in seconds. And then we were in a police car and they took us. I don't know where we were taken. It must have been City Hall or somewhere, but it was my first meeting with the uh, White Citizens Council and the uh, State Sovereignty Commission. Th these were not uh, street thugs. These were guys in suits and ties. And it was like an FBI intelligence operation. And I don't remember everything they asked us, but they gave us a choice. They said, you will... Um, you know, go to Parchman Penitentiary right now or you'll, you'll be taken to the airport and you'll get the hell out of Mississippi and never come back. So uh, we looked at each other trying to figure out what we were doing, what was our purpose. Remember, we were not necessarily activists. So we said, we'll take that plane. <laughs> and, 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 and so we go to the airport and called SNCC. SNCC, this is before internet, but it was done by phone, it was amazing. And they, they contacted the FBI in Atlanta and the Justice Department so that when we got to Atlanta, we did a debrief with the FBI and then got on the next plane to fly to uh, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Attorney General, and met with the Assistant Attorney General. This was all Forgive me, but it was all within a 24-hour period. This is when you could walk into Bobby Kennedy's Justice Department and talk to somebody. And here's the other thing um, I want you to remember, besides the photographer that told us to get out. Uh, the Assistant Attorney General of the United States, representing the Constitution of the United States, asked me uh, to ask SNCC to leave Mississippi because they couldn't be protected and they were all going to be killed. So it really, it, and I said, are you kidding? I mean, I came here to report on what they're doing. Um, if I was going to ask them to leave, I would have, don't you think I would have told them back in the, in the basement meeting? So, but then it, it hit me as I walked out of the government that it's really true. The Constitution does not apply to Mississippi. Not rhetoric. They will not enforce the Constitution, even if um, this person or that person uh, gets killed. They don't have the... I, I took them to mean they didn't have the political capacity to do it because they would be in such trouble as the U.S. government. So I passed that along. I told... Bob and the people of Mississippi, guess what? 
Constitution doesn't apply in Mississippi. They said, we knew that when you're coming back. So that was the story.